Hello and welcome to BQ Prama. Miral Dadia joining us on the show today is Bimlen, Mr. Bimlendra Ja, MD at JSPL, to discuss in terms of Q3 numbers and what's in store going ahead. Welcome to the show, Mr. Ja. Uh, Mr. Ja, my first question coming to you is overall, if you see in terms of the volumes, yes, we've seen a degrowth coming in. There have been a lot of uh, impact that's come in on the back of the export duty as well. Overall, has the number met your internal expectations? I think uh, not only has uh, uh, has it met our internal expectations, we have exceeded at most places the analyst expectations. Uh, yeah. As far as our uh, volume numbers are concerned, what happened at the end of quarter two was that we were able to uh, reduce our inventory significantly. And uh, that is why we got more volumes than our production uh, in terms of sales at the end of quarter two. And therefore, quarter three was primarily whatever we could produce, we could sell. Uh, there was only some disturbance due to the non-availability of rates, as many rates in India have been uh, rededicated to the transportation of thermal coal. Uh, so that affected us by about 30, 35,000 tons, but otherwise uh, there was no other buildup of inventories. So whatever we produced, we could sell. Right. Uh, additionally, uh, there was lack of availability of rail rakes as well, right, which resulted in lower dispatches. So overall, uh, how is the scenario now? So there continue to be disturbances, particularly in the eastern sector and the priority that remains on um, uh, giving thermal coal a priority for movement. And that is affecting raw materials. That is also affecting sometimes congestion uh, where our steel uh, is not able to go out or uh, get stuck on certain stations. So I think there is a lot of improvement that is needed in this area. And we'll be happy uh, to work together with railways to um, improve the situation. Right. And overall, the you know, as you mentioned as well, the EBITDA saw a good increase on a sequential basis. Now, we have seen a fall in, you know, prices in terms of key raw materials, specifically with regards to where thermal coal goes, whereas steel prices did remain stable. So how are you expecting the trend on that front? I think uh, steel is getting impacted far more by the coking coal prices and India is dependent almost 90% for on the imports, where the coking coal prices have been rising, particularly by the end of the quarter, last quarter, uh, in the month of December. Uh, so if you see the steel prices, uh, they bottomed out in the month of November, and then they started rising towards the end of December, and further rise has taken place in the month of January on the back of uh, increase in coking coal prices as well as iron ore prices because both uh, Orissa Mining Corporation as well as, uh, uh, you know, NMDC have increased their prices. And most of the price increase in steel has come on the back of these cost increases which have been uh, passed through to the customers. Uh, it only happens when there is strong and robust demand which happens to be there in this quarter and it is also expected in the next quarter so to that extent that past 